Six-year-old Zainab was last seen alive in this CCTV footage, being led away from a street near her home by the man who would murder her. She was one of over half a dozen victims of a serial child killer, loose in the city of Kasud. When her body was discovered days later, furious crowds poured out into the streets, blaming police for not doing enough to stop the attacks. The case dominated headlines. In a socially conservative country, many hoped the attention would raise awareness about child abuse. Now, a year on, I want to see whether the tragic murders here have had a lasting impact. Zainab's mother still keeps her daughter's school uniform in the room they once shared. She tells me she's struggling to come to terms with her loss. You know what mothers are like. If someone even slaps your child, it hurts you so much. This is the man who killed Zainab, 24-year-old Imran Ali. He was arrested, then executed, last October. Zainab's family believe they have now received justice, but say more still needs to be done to prevent other children being abused. There are still so many incidents happening. We need more CCTV cameras, and the government should introduce a program into the school curriculum, raising awareness about child abuse. I don't think anything has changed. The situation is just as bad as it was before. As soon as you turn the TV on, you hear stories of other cases like ours. I can't bear to watch them. The children have different names, but I feel as if they are saying Zainab's name. Everyone says, have patience. But I ask them, where can I get patience from? I still feel Zainab's presence at home. Zainab's body was discovered in this rubbish dump. She was one of eight young girls to be attacked by the same man. The case did provoke a national discussion on child abuse, but many here still don't feel comfortable talking openly about the subject, and victims often don't get the support that they need. This man's daughter was assaulted by the same man who killed Zainab. She survived, but is still recovering from her ordeal. We aren't showing his face, to protect his daughter's identity. If a door slams, she gets scared. Anytime she sees a stranger, she's terrified. She runs inside the house and closes the door. If anyone even raises their voice, she gets scared. She's been like that ever since the incident. Her father says they were given some financial compensation, but have never been offered psychological support. His daughter was even told to visit the attacker in jail to try and identify him. He was inside his cell. The judge was there as well as two policemen. She started shaking and gasping for breath. No, she shouldn't have gone. At this school in Kasood, they are now taking action. The head teacher is talking to pupils about what to do if someone tries to touch them inappropriately. It's part of a new scheme in the city introduced in the past few weeks. Or is much, it's way ahead. Newly appointed deputy commissioner Wasima Umma is the official behind the project. What is important is that we communicate. We communicate with our children at home, at school, um, also, we need to, awareness is the key, uh, we need to talk about issues that at the moment are no-go zones. And has that become easier after the publicity around the Zainab case? Highlighting the Zainab case, of course, has, has helped us in bringing um, more focus on how parents should pay attention and children, the teachers should pay attention to what is happening with the children uh, once they are out of homes. Uh, she says they've also introduced a counselling service for victims in the last month. When I told her we had spoken to families who had never been offered support, she promised to take action. Uh, what we are going to do is reach out to those families, um, talk to those children. I, for instance, personally 
uh, would like to see them and uh, counsel them because I've been a student of psychology myself. According to one leading charity, on average, around 12 children are abused every day in Pakistan. At times, some end up repeating the behavior, creating a vicious cycle. A source involved in the investigation into Zainab's murder told me the killer himself had been abused throughout his childhood. It's hard to think of someone responsible for so many horrific crimes as having once been a victim. But perhaps if he'd been able to access support when he was younger, none of this would have ever happened. On the anniversary of Zainab's death, her father has organized a rally in memory of his daughter. The government has promised to pass a bill named after her, improving the way police deal with child abuse cases. Her parents and residents here hope some good can come out of this tragedy.